Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the 46th lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. In our last lecture, we were discussing marketing management. We will continue to discuss marketing management in this lecture also. To start with, we shall discuss about consumer behavior. As you know, the success of an enterprise depends on how a product is sold in the market to the consumers. Therefore, it is important for the market, for the, for the company to understand how the consumer behaves. That is called consumer behavior study. Basically, Consumer behavior is the response of the consumer to various stimuli coming from outside and that is described in the form of three boxes. One the outside stimuli, the other buyers own black box the behavioral pattern the decision making process, his own cultural value system and how he behaves as far as his buying of the product is concerned. In the first box, we have outside stimuli coming from two distinct groups of sources. One is the company's marketing manage, marketing efforts with regard to the four P's, with regard to product, price, place and sales promotion. The other is the stimuli that is generating from the environment, from the country's environment, the economic environment of the country, the technological environment the political environment and the cultural value system in the society. These are the external stimuli and the buyer is conditioned by some of his or her cultural, social, personal and psychological characteristics and finally, the buyer decides to actually go around the market, look for products, search for information regarding functionalities of the products, the prices, the after sale service, evaluates all the values and then decides which product he will buy and finally, how he reacts to the warranty and the failure patterns of the product. So, this is basically the buyer's own behavior as it is reflected in the buying of a product, the behavior is reflected in terms of the selection of the product that he buys, the choice of the product band, the dealer from whom he buys the product, the time at which he buys the product and the amount he pays to buy the product. So, this basically is something like a model of how consumer behaves with regard to the marketing effort put forth by the company. Now, a buyer has got five types of role. 
he may just be an initiator who first suggests that a product of a particular type should be bought. He or she could be an influencer whose opinion matters, an influential person in the family or in the friend circle, somebody who decides that we should go for this product, maybe the housewife. Buyer is the person who actually pays and buys the product and the user could be a different person. Therefore, a person can have five roles, initiator, influencer, decider, buyer and final user. Now, with regard to the involvement of a consumer in buying a product and with regard to the differences between the brands among the products, the consumer can display different behavioral patterns. If the brand difference is significant and the person takes high amount of interest and gets involved in the buying process, then it is called a complex buying behavior. If the difference among the product brands is not so distinct, but the person gets highly involved in trying to find out the differences between them, then it is a different type of consumer behavior and if the difference among the brand is high, but person's involvement is low, then it is a different type of behavior and finally, small differences between brands and low involvement of the person buying the product is a different behavioral pattern. Let us study for each type of each group of behavior, each type of behavior, what should be the marketing strategy. The first one expensive, risky and infre infrequent purchases with significant brand differences. So, these are the products expensive, risky and infrequent purchases where the brand differences could be high and the buyers involvement could be very high. So, customer must learn or tries to learn the different attributes that a product two products give before taking a decision which product to actually go for. Therefore, the marketing strategy of the company should be to let the customer know the different functionalities of the product, so that he is educated and then he can decide which product to go for. If it is expensive, risky and infrequent purchase, but there is not much of a difference among the brands, then the customer normally goes for price consideration. But the post purchase experience of the buyer may not be very good. Therefore, the marketing strategy for such consumer behavior is to inform the customer about the post purchase experience such as failures, repairs, warranty and such post purchase information. Then the third type of consumer behavior that brand switching occurs for seeking variety. The consumer basically looks for different types of products and therefore, he switches brand. Now, marketing strategy for the leader there can be a company who is leader in the market there can be another company who is not a leader in the market, but he follows the leader. It has got less market share, they are called follower companies. The leading companies, they should go for advertisement and their product should be available on the shelf of the dealer, readily available. Whereas, for a follower, he should go for 
lower price of course advertising maybe he can give certain free samples and lastly the fourth type of consumer behavior is where the involvement is low and not much of a difference exists among the products. Then this is a case of brand familiarity rather than brand loyalty. The marketing strategy should be go for good pricing or competitive pricing and of course, advertising. So, for different types of consumer behavior, different types of marketing strategy should be followed and these are highlighted in this particular slide. Next, recall that we had discussed about market segmentation and market product positioning. Now, in the market segmentation can be of different types geographic, demographic, psychological, behavioral and preferences towards product features. Basically, geographic means let us say eastern India, western India, central India and so on and so forth. Demographic could mean with respect to age or income or sex. With respect to psychological characteristics, it could be social class, lifestyle, personality characteristics. With respect to behavior, it could be for, be for different occasions such as marriage, for different a particular type of benefit or user status, usage rate, loyalty, buyer readiness and attitude. Market segmentation could also be done considering preferences towards product features. Now, we have to target a particular segment. For that, we have to evaluate each market segment in terms of its size, growth, attractiveness and of course, company's own objectives and resources and then only go for selecting the market segment. We explain this in the form of a matrix. Let us say there are that there are different products P 1, P 2 and P 3 and these are target markets M 1, M 2 and M 3 representing different customer groups. Now, we show here five forces determining the, the segment structural attra attractiveness, the Porter's five force model, where the products are like suppliers, various companies gives different products or same companies may be give, giving different products. This is the supplier's power. Potential entrants, there are different markets substitutes or threats of substitutes and the buyers who buy it and the competitors segment, segment rivalry. So, basically we can think of different market segments and different products that are available to suit different market segments. We saw this in more detail here. Suppose that a company thinks that this particular product with certain attributes would fit extremely well in this particular market segment. Therefore, this is where the product should be positioned. This is called a single segment concentration. If however, the company has only one product or specializes in single product and it visualizes that it has a use in all the market segments, then it can offer their product to the complete market, but it has only one single product. It is possible that the company may have different brands, it only, it only offers that 
to only one market segment, all types of products. So, this is a case of market specialization. The previous one is a case of product specialization. Here is a case of selective specialization, where the company actually finds out with regard to the segmentation that it has done in the market, this particular product may be very well suited for this market segment, whereas this P 3 could be well suited for M 2 and P 1 very well suited for M 3. So, it selects depending on the attributes of the product, the functionalities of the product and the characteristics of the market segment, it decides which particular product will suit which market segment. And the last is of course, a company who is a leader producing a wide variety of products can actually cover the complete market, all types of market segments. So, these are different patterns of market coverage. Of course, it is possible that one particular product is offered to two markets, P 3 is offered to this market, P 2 is offered to M 1 and M 2 and M 3 is offered by both P 1 and P 2. So, now we are talking about product positioning. Product positioning is basically the act of designing a company's image and the value offer, so that the segment's customers understand and appreciate what the company stands for in relation to its competitors. So, basically it is a question of what should be the competitive advantage of the particular product relative to its competitors. Now, there are for example, the company may decide to go for a low price product. So, the position it takes is low price position. The company may decide to offer a very high quality product, then the position it is taking is a high quality position or it could be a new technology product. So, the position taken is a high technology position or it could decide to give extremely good after sales service, in which case the position is a high service position. So, basically product positioning means to offer product with certain competitive advantage in mind relative to its competitive products. And once this strategy is made, concrete actions must be taken to ensure that the competitive advantage desired is actually implemented in the product. Now, we come to the question of marketing strategy. So, naturally it will depend on the competitor strategy and the changing phase of the product life cycle we have already studied product life cycle and the market opportunities and challenges. So, these are the three aspects on which the strategy that the company should take with regard to marketing will depend the competitors, the product life cycle phase and the opportunities and challenges in the market both national and international. Now, we try to first of all classify companies with regard to whether they are leaders, challengers or new companies and so on and so forth. And for each one of them we try to say what should be the marketing strategy. For companies who are leaders in the market their strategy could be of three types. They may expand their existing market, in which case they will naturally look for new users 
and new uses of the same product, they may at least defend the market share by continuously innovating new products and increasing the different the number of types of products or the product variety or they may offer superior quality product with affordable price and thus expand the market share. So, they can expand the total market, they can expand the market share and they can defend the market share. Next, for companies who are challenging the leader, they can go for different types of strategy. These are taken from the strategies that are used in military, but they have meanings when competition in marketing takes place. Frontal attack. Frontal attack means you more number of products you prepare and price cuts you give. They are available in plenty in the market compared to the leader. This is frontal attack. Flunk attack, it compensates the weakness of the leader. So, it tries to find out where the leader is weak, which particular attribute the leader's product does not have, you provide that or which geographical market segment it is not offering its products or particular segment it is not offering, you try to the challenger company will try to popularize their, their product in those market segments or encirclement attack offensive both in from the front and from the side. That means, both this strategy and the flank attack strategy, both strategies are followed in the encirclement attack. Bypass attack strategy is diversifying into unrelated products. If the company finds that in this particular product, it cannot compete with the leader, then at least it can go to unrelated products, so it can diversify its business or go to new geographical markets or produce new technology products. In the list, it can use a guerrilla attack strategy. Selectively, it can cut prices or in some moments, it can a burst of sales promotional activities, it can undertake. So, for challengers, there are a large number of strategies available to challenge the leader. Now, let us see how the followers and the newcomers strategy should be designed. Followers can closely follow the leader that means, in the same market segment and in the same marketing mix they can use or they can follow at a distance that means, they can make their product slightly different from the products of the leader or they can have some innovation in certain products selectively. So, for a follower these are the strategies. For nichers those who are new to this particular market in this particular product, they have a number of strategies. What they can do is specializes in serving one type of end user customer. For entrepreneurs, in fact, these are the strategies that are meaningful. They try to focus and serve a particular end use customer or end user. Specializes in some vertical level of production distribution cycle. So, they go for a particular company and a particular customer. So, the vertical level of production distribution they maintain concentrates on selling the products to a very small number of customers. 
limits their sales to one major customer, selects a specific geographical region, produces a specific product or even a part or parts of a particular product. They can provide unique product features, they can produce custom products, they can produce low or high or price and quality products. That means, low price product or high price products or low quality products or high quality products. They can provide unique type of service and they can specialize in serving only one channel of distribution. So, there are different strategizing strategies available for the newcomers or entrepreneurs. Now, with regard to the stage of product life cycle, the marketing strategies can also differ. We already know that there are basically four stages introduction, growth, maturity and decline. In the introduction phase, the decision has to be taken with regard to particularly promotion, the marketing strategy should be highly high promotion. The company has to promote the product, they can decide whether to go for high price or low price or whether they should go for a small market or a large number of market, but they must promote their product. In the growth stage, they must maintain good quality and give new features or functionalities of the product. They must bring out new models, they must target new markets or market segments. They may go for not conventional distribution channels, but different types of distribution channels and selectively they can even lower prices. Now, these strategies one or some combination of these strategies should be followed in the growth stage. In the marketing in the maturity stage naturally there is competition and therefore, one can think of different types of markets or different types of marketing mix to continue to see that the products continues in the maturity phase as long as possible compared to its competitors. In the decline stage, naturally the company has to take a strategy of phasing out products that are not giving good revenues, weak products. They must cut costs or expenditures, thus reduce price. They can go for reduced advertising expenses and reduced sales promotion, because they know that the product is being phased out. Thus, there are different strategies available for different stages of a product life cycle. Now, we go for marketing channels. We have already talked about supply chain management in great detail and marketing channels are similar to supply chain management in many respects. Basically, marketing channels are sets of interdependent organizations involved in the process of making a product or service available for use or consumption. And they are they consist of flow of goods, order, cash, information, even title or ownership and promotion or advertising. Now, we depict them as we had done in supply chain management in some network form. We use M for manufacturer, C for customer 
and D for distributor. This is the case where manufacturer manufacturer directly contacts the customers. So, if there are three manufacturers and there are three customers, the number of contact points are 9. Whereas, if there is a distributor in between the manufacturing and the consumption stage or manufacturer and consumer, then we have only 6 number of contacts. Thus, there is an economy of effort. Each manufacturer knows that it has to supply to one distributor. So, the effort of the manufacturer in trying to contact the customer is less, it is passed on to the distributor and it can concentrate on designing and manufacturing the product with less number of less price and high number of product features. Now, between the manufacturer and the customer, there can be a direct contact if there, is, there are no intermediaries. This is called a zero level channel or manufacturer can directly give to the retailer who in turn sells it to the customer. This is a one level channel MRC, M for manufacturer. R for retail, C for customer or there can be two level channel manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer and customer or there can be three level channel manufacturer, wholesaler, jobber, retailer and customer. A jobber's work is to bring from the manufacturer wholesaler goods and give it to the retailer and collect orders from retailers and give it to wholesaler. So, this is a three level channel where there are three channel organizations, two level channel, two level of organization, one organization retailer and no organization here. Now, the company has to decide which particular which particular channel it should go for, whether it should directly contact or go through a retail or a wholesaler retailer or a wholesaler jobber and retailer channel. This decision the company must make. For that mathematical analysis can be done, but before that certain information is collected, analyze customer needs for customer needs, analyze customer needs, I am sorry there is a mistake, analyze yes, analyzing customer needs with regard to the lot size, the how long they can wait. How, mon, how many items they need that is the lot size, which point they would like to be given the product and what product variety. Then establish channel objectives, product characteristics are they have to understand product characteristics which is perishable, bulky, non standardized or high unit value they have to also consider strengths and weaknesses of middlemen, nearness to competitors outlet, company's marketing strategy, financial resources and product mix, environmental characteristics such as economic conditions and legal regulations. So, these are of course, written down in a very subjective manner but as I am telling that it is possible to take or make mathematical analysis with regard to deciding what should be the number of levels of intermediaries in the marketing channel. Identify major channel alternatives 
and it has been seen that for equipment manufacture the company sales force or manufacturers agency or industrial distributor would constitute the intermediaries. For FM car radio manufacturer for example, the OEM market original equipment manufacturer market, auto dealer market, retail automotive parts dealer or mail order market and these are the intermediaries. Of course, it is possible to go for door to door selling and through department or discount stores. Now, the number of intermediaries also will depend on the type of distribution we are making. If it is intensive distribution, it means that we are stocking product in many outlets. Exclusive distribution, we are giving products only to a few dealers or we are selectively deciding to whom we should give more than one, but less than the willing intermediaries. Now, terms and responsibilities of channel members, price policy, what should be the list price and what should be the discount schedules, conditions of sale, discounts for early payments or for higher lot size, guaranteeing, guarantees regarding defective product or price decline and distributors territorial rights. Mutual services and responsibilities, companies responsibility for making building, product exhibit, software, promotional programs etcetera. So, these are to be decided when we decide the channel member and an agreement must be signed by the company with these channel members. Lastly, evaluating major channel alternatives, whether the company should go for its own sales force to sell the product in the market or it should go through sales agency. It can follow certain economic criteria such as cost benefit analysis or it can go for other considerations such as knowledge of technical details, knowing the customer's interest, so on and so forth. How to motivate the channel members? There are different ways. Already we have discussed some of them in our supply chain management lectures. We are adding some more. We can bring in certain cooperation by providing higher margins, special deals or premiums or we can the company can go for cooperative advertising allowances display allowances or sales contract, these are all positive motivators to motivate the channel member to cooperate with you or you can negatively also influence them. So, that their cooperation increases, you can reduce margin, slow down delivery or even lastly terminate relationship. The company can go for a long term partnership with the channel members like you can tell the intermediary to cover a higher market segment, make products available for a longer time, develop the market by subsidizing, give technical advices and services, provide market information or give sales commission. Or the third type of strategy is manufacturer may have a department of distributor relation planning jointly making marketing plans along with the distributors. Thus, three types of distributor relations are cooperation, long term partnership and distribution programming. Now, it is possible that the marketing system can be developed in a vertical fashion one channel member that is manufacturer or wholesaler or retailer owns the others or franchises them 
or has so much power that they all cooperate. They thus achieve economy through their size, bargaining power and absence of duplication. There are three types of vertical marketing system. One cooperative VMS called vertical, vertical integration where manufacturer opens and operates its own retail outlets or administered VMS. One member say manufacturer has the dominant role in deciding displays, self space, promotions and pricing policies and of course, contractual VMS where the manufacturer gives a contract to a retailer which is the most popular in recent times. Contractual VMS are independent firms at different levels of supply chain who integrate their programs on a contractual basis to obtain economy of scale and sales impact. So, basically different intermediaries they cooperate on a to obtain economy of scale and sales impact. There are three types of contractual VMS wholesaler sponsored voluntary chains they organize the retailers retailer cooperatives they organize a new entity to carry on the wholesale activities they decide the retailers decide who the wholesaler should be here the wholesaler decides who the retailer should be or they could be franchise organizations where manufacturer manufacturer sponsored retailer franchise system it could be manufacturer sponsored retailer franchise system or it could be service firm sponsored retailer franchise system. I am sorry this is there is a duplication here. Yes. <clears throat> it is also possible that there is a horizontal marketing or a symbiotic marketing system where two or more non related companies put together their resources or programs to exploit an emerging market. Example is that the manufacturer and the distributor together set up an advertising company or it could be a multi channel marketing or multi marketing where a single firm sets up more than one marketing channel. So, we have talked about marketing channel at length. Now, let us discuss about promotion mix strategy. Now, there are four ways in which sales uh, promotion can be done, product can be promoted in the market, advertising, sales promotion, publicity and personal selling. Advertising is basically non personal presentation, the person is not directly involved with the customer. Sales promotion basically is short term incentives giving short term incentives to the buyer such as rebates, low interest financing, lotteries, gifts and demonstrations. Publicity is non personal stimulation of demand by trade shows, speeches, seminars, annual reports charitable donations and public relations and finally, product can be promoted by personal selling that is oral presentation such as sales meeting, telemarketing etcetera. Now, 
for consumer goods and industrial goods, the relative performance of different promotions, product promotion schemes can be different. For example, it is seen that for consumer goods, advertising is the best promotional scheme and publicity is not so well. Advertising is best followed by sales promotion, followed by personal selling, followed by publicity. Whereas, for industrial goods, personal selling is the best as far as its performance is concerned compared to others. Sales promotion, advertising comes next and the last is of course, publicity. Now, promotion is basically effective communication about the product features to the potential customers. Now, there are different stages, steps. Identify the target audience is the first step. Determine what you would like to convey to the audience. Basically, audience means potential customers. Design the message, what exactly you would like to convey select the communication channel, how you would like to convey, allocate a budget, measure the result of the promotional scheme and coordinate the process. So, there are 7 steps, we shall discuss a few. Identify target audience. Here, the we are assessing the audience's current image of the company, its products and its competitors. So, basically a potential potential customer what he or she thinks about the company and its products and about it about the competitors, competitive products in the market. Normally, they are measured in two scales familiarity of the product and the company with the customer and the attitude of the customer. They can be in four grids A, B, C, D. If the, if the potential customer is highly familiar with the company and its product and its attitude is favorable, then this is the most positive image the company, the product, the, the customer is carrying. So, he must continue to maintain the image. The strategy of the advertising or strategy of our promotional scheme should be that this image must be maintained. The second is the customer is highly favorable to buying a product, but is not very familiar with the company's product or with the company. So, few people know about the company or its product and few people like it. Therefore, the strategy should be that their, their attention must be drawn to the company and to the product. C is few people know it, but they do not like it. So, unfavorable attitude they do not like it and they. So, naturally you will have to improve the performance of your product and of the company. And lastly, many people have unfavorable attitude. They are familiar with your product, but they are not favorable as far as the product is concerned. So, what is required is that do not go for high profile advertisement keep a low profile, but try to increase the quality of the product. And once the quality is improved, seek attention of the potential customers again. Now, there are different stages of communication objectives for a potential customer. One is that the cognitive stage or affective stage or behavior stage. Cognitive stage is basically 
making a potential customer aware about the product to let him know about the product. Affective stage is that he is aware, but he must like the product, he must prefer it to other products and he must be convinced that this product is the best among the available products. Third is of course, that he buys it. So, these are three different stages through which a potential customer passes before he buys. So, that are the these are the different stages of communication objectives designing the message. So, what you are actually focusing or designing your advertisement you should try to get the attention of a potential customer that is awareness and knowledge hold his interest and arouse desire and elicit actual buying or action. This is called A I D A model attention, interest, desire and action model. Now, what should be the content of the message? The message should have appeal, theme, idea and a unique selling proposition USP. There are three types of appeal rational, emotional and moral. Rational meaning the functionality of the product should be let known to the potential customer. The emotional appeal is what he will derive from acquiring the product love, pride, joy or he will get rid of fear, guilt or shame and the moral appeal that he is doing what is right and proper. So, friends marketing management is a very very developed area with high practicality in real life. We could not cover everything, we have given only the essence of marketing management and it is hoped that an entrepreneur will try to not only produce products, but also market his product effectively to the potential customers. Thank you very much.